Good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. So we've got the Case IH 2388 Dad's Combine. We're going to run it back to the shop and uh, make some repairs on it. For one thing it needs thawed out inside because the screens are all iced up from picking in the snow yesterday. So while it's in the shop it can thaw out. Uh, another thing we need to do is the tie bar, tie rod, whatever you want to call it, that goes between the two final drives and the front axle that helps pull together the axle tube. Basically, it's kind of like a truss rod, so you can call it a truss rod also. Um, it keeps tension on them two final drives and pulls them together to help support the front axle of the combine. Uh, especially with having duels on it, that outside wheel is so far out there that this just helps everything stay strong. So that rod has broken, one end is broke off of it. Uh, it done it before and it was prior to us getting in combine and it had plenty of threads on it. So we just uh, backed the nuts off and slid it one way and put the nut back on the outside of it. And it worked for the longest time. Well, the other day we were under the combine and realized it was broke again, which is a pretty common occurrence on these case combines for that to break. Um, so we went down to the case dealer and priced one, and that rod is $2,200. So we ended up finding one. Uh, my cousin Matt had one off of a combine that he bought. He took the duels off and just put singles on it and took the axle spacers and all that out. So he didn't need that rod anymore. So we went and got the one from him and now we're gonna put that one on this combine. So we're gonna get back to the shop. Not sure how involved it's gonna get. I'm not sure if we're gonna have to pull a set of duels off to slide it through, but it was something that we didn't really wanna do out in the field and the combine needs thawed out anyways. So we figured we'll just run it back to the shop. So we'll get to the shop and see what we get into. All right, so George and I got the head all unlatched, got the step flipped over. Gotta go ahead and set the head off. There we go. Now we can take it in the shop where it's nice and warm. Okay, so this is the bar that we're gonna replace right here. This end is broke off right here. You can see the nut here but the end is broke off. There's supposed to be a nut in here. And all this bar does is puts tension between the two final drives and helps support the axle, which is right here. So this bar runs through these plates here and here. So you definitely have to take the wheels off to get it out. What I think actually, is you can see that hole in that rim, I think that originally those holes were supposed to be lined up and this bar would slide through those holes and go out but the holes are not lined up in the rims because apparently over time the tires have been on and off and nobody's lined them up. So we're gonna take off the outside dual and we're gonna turn it to line up with this bar and see if it'll go out that hole. That way, if it'll go out that hole, we don't have to take the inside wheel off. So let's see what happens. We do have it jacked up and we do have jack stands under it, so it's safe. Last bolt. Nope, not yet. No, not yet. Second to last bolt. No. So there's what? Five bolts that hold the inside rim on yet? So now we can take this outer tool off and the inner one will stay in. All right, now, if my theory is correct, we can turn this hole to line it up with that bar, and it should come out. 
I'm gonna jack it up a little more. Okay, so we got the combine jacked up and actually the wheel will not turn. Uh, apparently it's, it's just not the way it works. I thought it would. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this, this coupler off, this drive coupler that connects the final drive to the shaft that comes from the transmission. Should be able to just slide this over and it will allow that final drive to turn freely. There's just a collar here that needs to be taken off. Just two Allen head cap screws, six millimeter Allen heads or uh, Allen wrench socket. That's all right, I'll get it. Now, this should slide off. Well, it should anyways. Probably gonna have to get a hammer and beat on it some. Because it's probably a little worn. It's got some grooves and it's still cold. So the grease is probably cold. We'll see what happens here. trying to. I have to get a pry bar and pry on it. It's trying to move. Yeah, it's got old grease in it. That's the problem. There it goes. Gotta get that. There we go. All right, I got it, George. Just was stubborn. All right, see that wheel turn now. Oh, I can do it. Oh, yep, look at there. That's what we needed. That'll work. Now we can line that hole up. All right, there's our hole. Bring it down. Uh, right about there somewhere. Let me see the light. All right, so we need to go a little further. There it is. I can't tell if that lines up or not. We'll have to see. Well, so the bar doesn't line up with the hole in the rim, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the inside wheel completely off out of our way, which is no big deal. It's only only five bolts. We're here anyways. Well, with the wheel out of the way, now we can see the final drive. So that's what actually makes the combine go through the field. Shafts come from the transmission and run the final drives. So now we can get to that bar, which is right here. Now we just slide it out that way once we get the nuts off the other end and the one remaining nut on this end. Okay. So you gotta get these nuts off of this end, or loosened up anyways. Wasn't super tight. Get this one loosened up a little bit, then this one should come off fairly easy. Nope, maybe not. I have to get a pipe wrench to turn that bar. Yeah, maybe. I have to make a wrench too. I really don't want to pull that set of wheels off. Oh, that'll work. Okay. 
just pipe wrench or something. Turn that far with. back the other nut some off too. There it is. Alright, that one's off. Now we go to the other side and get that one. Now we got to, got to get this one threaded in so we can pull this rod one way and get the nut off the other end. And push it back. Because we'll have to get the nuts completely off of it to get it through the square plates or through the holes in the frame and the plates. Got water in my eyes. So, the only bad thing about a combine that's wet and it's dripping. It's like rainforest under here. Oh, Alright. Now if you can get your nut off that end, pull it back, we'll get this nut off. Then we should be able to pull it out. Must well, much faster when George turns it for me from that end. Uh oh, got a rough spot in the threads. Slowed him down. Need a big drill that we can put the chuck on it. Alright, my inner nut's off. We can go pull it out the other side. Now we should be able to pull it right out. Something like that would be $2,200. We make all kinds of stuff out of that. Blacksmith would love that for making knives out of. It's a shame if it was a hair longer, we could still use it. It's probably been stressed though, and that's why it keeps breaking. Well, we got our new rod all cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and slide it in. Lost the camera. Let's stick this back to the forklift. All right, let's try this again. Watch the camera. I won't hit the camera this time. Let's Tighten. Well, we've got that truss rod back in, and uh, 
I need to see what the torque spec is on them nuts because I've heard there is a torque spec on them. So we're going to get in the, the 2388 Bible here and uh, see if we can find some information on that. Well, after digging through the book here, I finally found what I was looking for. So number three is a reinforcing rod. Number five is our inner nut. So they're saying to tighten this outer nut tight, which they don't verify what is tight. Is that 270 foot pounds? And then bring this nut against that one at 270 foot pounds? I'm not sure. Or are you supposed to just tighten this one tight and then torque this one to 270? So I'm not sure how to interpret it, that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to tighten it up until it feels good. And we're happy with it. Um, they also say you're not supposed to do this with the final drives hanging on it and the duals hanging on it. But we're not going to strip all that off the other side to be perfect like the book says. This book is actually for educational purposes for like a Case IH technician. So in a perfect world, they're doing all this in a educational environment in a school somewhere for Case IH where they've got this combine tore down already and that's all they're working on. Uh, we're, we're doing this as a repair aspect. Uh, we could be possibly out in the field, but we're not. But we're just not going to tear it all down to do this. So uh, what we are going to do is we'll torque these to 270 foot-pounds and uh, we'll call it good. Uh, the interesting thing is if you have small flange front axle, they actually require you to glue these extensions on and bolt them. I thought that was kind of fascinating that there's actually an adhesive kit that glues and bolts that to the end of the tube. So if you're ever taking a set of these extensions off and you got all the bolts out and you can't get it off still, it's probably because it's glued on. But if you have the large flange axle, those are not required to be glued on. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So anyways, I got me a number to go off of. That's what we're going to go with. So let's go put it back together. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tighten up this outer nut some. They said tight, so that's tight. So now we can torque this one against that. I'm going to go see if I have a big crow's foot to put on my torque wrench. Well, we're going to go ahead and tighten this up now to 270 foot-pounds. I did have a crow's foot big enough to use with this because we can't get a socket on it, obviously. So this is on my Amazon set, so we'll see how tough these are. It is a half-inch drive, so I had to use a three-quarter adapter to put it on my torque wrench. Now remember, kids, Wrangler Star said there is no use for a crow's foot in the mechanical world and threw all his away because he says most useless tool in his toolbox. I've used a crow's foot at least three times this month alone. So they are a very usable tool. All right, see if it withstands it. There's 270 foot pounds. Doesn't take much to do when you have a torque wrench that's that long. All right, now we can go do the other side. Well, we're gonna go ahead and torque this other side. I've been thinking about other ways that we can do this to make it like the book wants it to be, but sometimes you just can't overthink stuff and just do it. That's tight, it's 270 foot-pounds. So that's what the book says to do, so that's, that's what we did. We'll see what happens. Oops. Well, George is going to go ahead and open the rock trap. See if we got any treasures in it. I'm sure there's going to be corn and soybeans in it. Anything cool in it? It's just making a mess in the shop, that's all. Let me get a pry bar and scrape it out. <coughs> there you are. 
not enough. <laughs> Nothing cool though. Darn it, it's hoping something cool would fall out. Well, we got the duels back on the combine. George and I just quickly did it. We didn't didn't think about start the video. But we thought we better get this shaft put back on before somebody thinks that we forgot. You want to turn that a little bit, George? We don't want the 2388 to be doing one wheel peels. So, all right. What'd you say oh no for? <coughs> oh, which one? <coughs> oh, that's one of my favorite uncles. You know, studies show that kids kids look more forward to seeing their uncles during the holidays than they do any other uh, family member. If you're anything uncle like me, you teach your niece bad things. Hell, it's all back together now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just about. All right, get this collar oh, going. Is he smoking a cigar? No. I didn't smell it before he walked in. Oh, I'm sorry. He's not smoking a black and mild. Need to get him sponsored by black and mild. And now he starts to give dad hell. Well, kind of it was. Because then that was the determining factor to bring it home. It's not that bad. All right, so we'll get this tightened up. And then uh, get it off the jack. Got a few small other things to fix on it yet. And then it's ready to go again. Dad's got it about thawed out. All right, I'll get this finished up. We can't forget this little keeper that goes in here. So it keeps the bolts from backing out. Oh, I need to start in the bottom first, I think. Uh, well, I can't see the hole. It's here somewhere. Well, darn it. There it is. All right, I got it. All right, that's all back together. to make some really happy cows we're going to take everything that we cleaned out of the cow mine and give it to them to bunch on for a while keep them busy they're going to like this everything out of the rock trap everything that was in the auger beds oh yeah thank you George Go 
plants will like it too. They'll rummage through it and find the kernels of corn and stuff. Some soybeans in there. Drive over and put it over the fence. You gotta get all this corn picked. This is all ear corn, I just gotta get it picked. The corn that's left standing here. Just haven't hit a good weekend yet to do it. Been wanting to get it done. We're getting close to December now.